hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part five of our Toys and Joys 1929 Ford Steak Bed Truck Build. Well, a while back on this series, I think it might have been part one or two, I was going to make the fenders for this vehicle but didn't have the proper stock. Since then, I have restocked the wood rack and we can now carry on with those fenders with a little bit of walnut. Well, I have two pieces of walnut here that are two and a quarter inches wide. They're seven and five eighths long and one and one eighth inch thick. I have been very specific to keep them in very specific orientations. The reason for that is you need a couple extra pieces of wood and that will be for your fender wall, which you can see right here on the plans. And for that, I've cut two pieces of quarter inch thick walnut. Now they are cut from the exact same pieces of wood. This way, the grains will line up as best as possible. So let me show you where I got those dimensions from. Essentially, I took our plans for our fender and I squared it off. You can see that these pencil lines here are my drawings and I have squared it off to a usable blank. And then the fender wall, I've squared that off to another usable blank. So the fender wall is where we're going to start. And that will be our piece that is one and seven sixteenths by four inches. So what I want to do for the fender walls is I want to measure this angle. So we will measure from the edge of our board right here, right at the edge, over to the base of this angle and then we will cut it and we'll use the table saw and a miter fence cut that angle and then I'll show you where to go from there and with those angles cut we can now leave those pieces alone for now and turn our attention to some pieces of 1 8 inch thick MDF or hardboard and we have cut them the same size as our fender blanks and what I want to do for each one, I have photocopied that fender area and we're going to use spray adhesive and adhere both of these uh, patterns to our hardboard blanks. And to complete these templates, which is what they are, we need to take them over to the scroll saw or if you have a bandsaw, you can use a bandsaw and we're going to cut one of them along the lower line of the fender and we will cut the other one at the upper line of the fender, only those lines. So let's get those cut and then I'll show you what to do with them. Okay, so the first step in making these fenders now that you have both of these templates made is you want to take your inner fender template. You want to line it up on your block so that it is in line with the end and the bottom, just like that. And once you're happy with its alignment, we will trace this pattern on both of our pieces. Now it's up to you how you want to cut this. You can cut it with a band saw, you can cut it with the scroll saw, um, you can cut it by hand and sand up to the line. The, the choice is yours. I personally am going to put a brand new number seven PGT blade into the uh, scroll saw. That's pre precision ground tooth, by the way. And uh, I'm going to cut these with the scroll saw, just because that's what I'm comfortable with. But whatever method you use is just fine. So I'm gonna get these cut, and then from there, we're gonna move on to a little bit of a glue up. Well, truth be told, I cut it with the scroll saw just outside the line, and then I sand it up to that line to give me a nice, perfect cut. Um, the blade, on a scroll saw with a thick material like this can deflect, so it's just better to give yourself a little bit of leeway and sand it after. So what we need to do now is our fender walls need to be glued to our fender pieces. You want to make sure that you make a left and a right. And the way that I've set this up is that these points will line up with the end of our block. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna tip these up on their ends like this and I will then take these and glue this one here to the inside edge here and this one here to the inside edge just like that and let that completely set up now. 
But we now want to take our off cuts that we cut out of this thing earlier and I have a double or a piece of double sided tape on the inside of each of our fender walls. And what we're going to do is we want to take this cut off back inside. It's just for support and nothing else. So I'm just going to peel off the backing here. And to make sure that it lines up flush, I want to secure our fender flat to our bench. So that will keep it flat and flush and to the uh, table. And now we can slide our off cut in there. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly lined up as long as it is flat along the bottom. And then we'll use a clamp, clamp that up for a couple minutes just to let that double sided tape really adhere. And then we need to mark out the top profile of our fender. Well, on each one of these fenders, I have marked on the top surface a center line. It's probably not showing on camera, um, but that's okay. We know it's there. And I'm just going to use a one and one eighth inch circle template. We're going to line it up with that center line and we will draw our rounded one and one eighth inch diameter profile at the front of our fender. Now we can see at the top of our fender wall, we have this taper. I don't really like what they've done here, how it's become kind of blocky. It kind of tapers down and then goes into this big round over. So I'm gonna measure off this angle here and transfer it to our blank, trying my best to blend it in to the profile of that front one and one eighth inch round over. And before we do any of the shaping, we will also drill this hole right here on the inside edge of each fender. It's a 3 seconds diameter hole, and it looks like it's uh, three quarters of an inch deep. While all the pieces are nice and square, now is the time to drill that hole so we're not wrestling with something that's been shaped and has already lost its squareness. So once we get that hole drilled, we can head over to the belt sander. And now using our belt sander, we can shape that top profile of our fenders, um, making sure that this block is in place and securely there to help us support it as we're sanding. And now using our template for the top surface of our fender, we're going to line it up with the bottom of our blank, just like this. And we're going to trace it along. But here's the deal. <laughs> we need to support this piece again. And once I get this second one marked out, I'll show you exactly why. Well, due to the fender wall being glued on here, it's difficult to mark the shape of our fender because of this difference in elevation here. So that is why we marked it on the perfectly smooth side. However, now it's difficult to cut it and shape it because of the difference in elevation. So all I'm going to do is take a couple scraps of quarter inch hardboard. We will attach them to this area um, to support it and keep it level. I'm going to change my blade to a 3 16 blade over at the um, bandsaw for this one. This is a little much in my opinion for a scroll saw. I don't want to mess it up at this point. So I'm just going to take the bandsaw, cut it outside of the line, and then we're going to take it over to the oscillating drum and sand this fender so that it's perfect all the way around the way that we want it. And that will pretty much finish up our fenders. Um, there is some hand sanding still left to do here, but I will warn you, any areas like this that mate up to another flat surface, do not sand them by hand. Use blocks of MDF with sandpaper attached to it, and that way you're not going to round over the edge and lose your tight connection point here. So I'm going to finish these up with the hand sanding and once we get that done, we can glue those in place and uh, we can move on from there. 
One thing to keep in mind when you glue these fenders on uh, is that this is the time that the 332nd dowel will get installed. That dowel can be seen here on the plans. Um, you want to make sure that you glue this in now because you will not be able to get it in later without some serious bending and manipulating. But uh, either way, we can glue these on now with that dowel in place and let the fenders dry completely, guys. Don't mess around with it at this point. While we're waiting for those fenders to dry up, I have some chunks of maple here. They're just scrap that was in the rack. They're about one by one by inch and a half. I have drilled a quarter inch deep by five eighths diameter Forstner bit hole here in the middle of each piece. And as well, I have drilled a three sixteenths diameter pilot hole. Now the pilot hole will be to house this. And what we're going to do is we're going to place these blocks onto this little Morse taper mount here. And we're going to take it over to the lathe and we're going to turn the headlights of this vehicle. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here with this block of maple is I'm going to turn it to round and then reduce it to just slightly bigger than a three quarter inch diameter. Now from this edge here where our holes are, we're going to measure back 11 sixteenths of an inch right there. And we will place a mark there. This is actually the mark for the back end of our headlight. So all this from here out is junk. So I'm just going to turn it away until I get to that 11 sixteenths mark. You can part it off, you can cut it off, whatever you like. Um, I'm going to start shaping it. So I'm going to take this right down. And once we get it at that 11 sixteenths mark, we need to round this entire thing so it's completely round all the way around. And now that you have that done, you can give this a bit of a sanding. And then there's one more little detail that we want to add. Three sixteenths of an inch back from the front edge, which is the flat edge, we're going to place a mark. Now you want to be careful here because remember, we've got that five eighths inch diameter hole right inside here. If we cut too deep, we're going to cut right through. So with a detail chisel, you can use the um, toe of a skew chisel if you like. We're just going to dig in here just slightly. That's it, that's all I want. And we're going to just sort of round that off a little bit to soften it. That's it. So now with that, we have the frame or the housing of our headlight. And it still needs a bit of a sanding there. And we need to round off this outside edge. But there is the headlight housing frame. So we'll make a second one of those and I'll show you what to do with this cavity that we've got here. So with those two housings made, I now have some 5 8 dowel chucked up in my drill press. And all I'm going to do to make the lens or the lamp of the headlight is I want to round this bottom here. Um, so I'm just going to start up the drill and round it by hand using a piece of sandpaper. And once you're happy with the roundness of it, you can just cut it off um, so that it is just slightly raised above the frame of your headlight. And when you get both lamps done, you just put these in here. You should end up with a couple of headlights that look just like that. Not bad, eh? But there's one more thing that we need to do. And for that, uh, we need to make a little groove in this so that we can glue it to that 332nd inch dowel. So don't glue in your headlights yet. We have to cut that little groove. And for that, we're just going to use a small handsaw. 
So I have some 5 16th inch thick material underneath my saw here and on the bottom of the headlight I'm just going to carefully make a few passes here just to make a little indentation on our headlight. So at this point now I'm just going to take a file and get in there and file it enough so that our dowel will fit in that groove. And when you're happy with the way that they fit, glue them in place, being sure to use a square to make sure that they fit properly. And with those headlight housings dried up and secured in place, uh, we can now glue in our lamps. One piece of advice here to make it look um, to make it look as clean as possible, try to align the grains if there is some. Mine has a horizontal grain here, and I'm gonna do my best to line them up so that the grains match on both headlights. Well, with those headlights installed and done, really, that is three of the four pages complete, with the exception of, say, the door handles and a little bit of trim. I don't like putting those pieces on to last because they're more fragile and there's still a lot of manhandling that goes on with this model uh, while you're making it. So best to keep those fragile pieces away until the end. But for now, we're going to move on to the truck bed. There's really nothing to explain or show here, guys. It's a very simple measurement with the thickness, the width and the length. You just cut that piece on the table saw and that is it. Um, but when you look here at the truck bed supports and the bed frame, it kind of changes things up a little bit and you have to kind of look at the different views as to how it goes. So the truck bed that you cut here will actually get installed on four rails and you can see their dimension right here and their shape with that little chamfer on each corner. That is nothing more than table saw work um, to get those cut to their final dimensions. So you can cut those four. Also, the bed frame. Once again, you make two of them. It's very clear how many to make, just like the bed supports here. But just follow the dimensions with the thickness, the width, and the length. Cut the two, and but don't glue anything together yet. Let's give this a dry fit and I'll show you what we're looking at. So once all your pieces are cut, we can do a dry fit. Um, we'll have our bed frame right here, which goes on top of the truck frame. At certain intervals across our bed frame, these pieces here, which are our bed supports, they will get mounted just like this, squarely across our frame. And then, of course, our truck bed sits on top. So we're getting there, we're getting there. There's still a couple more pieces to cut for this truck bed here. Um, well, I guess we can get into that next week. And unfortunately, that's it for another week. Uh, we've run out of time again. While it doesn't seem like we accomplished that much, I have to tell you that the headlight housings, the headlight lenses, and the fenders, that took a full day to accomplish between the thought process and figuring it all out down to letting our pieces glue up before moving on to the next step. It takes time. It's all a process. And in order to get a successful model here and a good looking model, you need to have some patience. So either get a second project to work on while glue is drying or you know what, tidy up your shop, whatever you have to do. But my biggest piece of advice for things like those fenders is make sure that everything is completely dry before you move on to the next step. If you haven't already, guys, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a ton of fun here every Tuesday and Friday. More fun than I should legally be allowed to have. And I hope that you're going to consider becoming a part of that audience. Um, guys, honestly, I hope that you're enjoying this series. 
this series is meant for nothing more than to give those of you who really want to try one of these scale models, hopefully it'll give you the confidence you need to show you the methods along the way so that you can make your own successful model and then branch out from there to harder or more difficult or more challenging builds. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I really do. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. That was kind of aggressive, wouldn't it? Alternative Tuesdays. <laughs> That's funny.